Hello, my gorgeous listeners, and welcome back to the Acolyte Podcast. We gather again to discuss an article posted on the Indie Wire entitled Interview with a Vampire. Creator says Anne Rice should be part of literary canon. Now, this article was written by Kristen Lopez and it was posted on IndieWire.com on November 15, 2022. And this co title below the main title says Series Creator Rollin Jones tells IndieWire Anne Rice doesn't get the respect she deserves. And I feel like most of us here at the Acolyte podcast channel can agree with that statement. Anne Rice has been very undervalued in her for her works in the literary world. Um, she's not been depicted in most modern film and television. Uh, the most recent being her the newest TV show based off of her books of the Vampire Chronicles. So let's get into it. Here we have a, a nice photo of Lestat Louis and our beautiful and ever troublesome Claudia. So it says a little bit about how difficult it was for them to adopt interview during COVID. And they've talked a little bit in their special features about how chemistry reads were very interesting uh, through video phone call conferences. Um, Anne's books, what she is so successful at, Jones is quoted saying here, is all the prose about interior life. It's very difficult to turn that into dramatic actors talking to each other. But he has had previous work uh, transcribing different works to television. He has worked prior on a television show called Perry Mason, which I have not checked out myself. But I'm thinking I might have to with how everything seems to be turning out with Interview with a Vampire. <clears throat> and Anne's books, what she's so successful at, is that interplay between characters. And the first major standout piece of this article is the part where Jones is mentioned as bringing up the topic of the fandom community and how they are seeing what is developing around this new TV show and its plans going forth into the second season. And it's promising to me because, well, there was a fandom that was already here that has pre-existed with Anne Rice's novels. And I'm hoping that they will not burn the bridges to this pre-existing fandom as we have seen some other uh, we could say creative universes have done as well. I won't point any fingers or name any names but I'm, I think most of them can go unsaid. Um, but Indie Wire has asked Rollin Jones if he can talk about formulating the finale and so we would like to give a little minor spoiler warning here I'm not very good at keeping myself from getting excited and talking about things that I shouldn't so uh he says it's a popcorn episode and I feel it kind of is it can be a bit catchy and it's definitely thriller in an over-the-top way because I feel like there's some other things being spoken to that aren't those kitschy horror lines. There's a relationship falling apart that's being beautifully portrayed by Jacob Anderson and Sam Reed. And the multiple layers of emotions that both of those men depict while that relationship falls apart is beautiful. And Claudia's interwoven connections between them and the plotting of it 
It was very beautifully done. I feel like he's not quite giving himself enough credit for the creation of this scene. Whereas, yes, Sam and Jacob both fully deserve a lot of credit, that, and especially the credit he's given them in their portrayal of these scenes. <clears throat> and so he goes on to answer a few more questions. Um, said, is it easier to craft something like this, where you have a written text versus something like his previous work, Perry Mason, where he's working with an existing show? And he says, sometimes it's great, and you're not building from a blank state or uh, navel-gazing from your life. There's an inherent structure with Anne's books and what she was so successful at, and I'm excited seeing him bring up the fact of these interior lives and the difficulty of those structures and turning those into dramatic interactions between the actors. And there's a host of adaptation strengths and opticals, no matter what you're doing, whether turning it into a film or a television show, there's always the issue of crossing into a different media type and trying to translate those story structures into a different form of storytelling. And the next question is, are you surprised by the fervid fandom that's cropped up with the show, especially regarding the diversity of cast? And I think there's something that should be stated, like I said, about the fandom that was already here, in spite of any diversity casting. So it says some of it comes from the mandate from the network, I guess. The network wants a big tent. Organically, they had come to decisions about who they were going to cast or what they were going to write for Louis, but it wasn't necessarily diversity or queerness. A real important part, Jones says, was if he knew the book really well, how can you make the that exciting for people like me, for example, who are just going to show up there, sit and wait and paint by numbers and this is how they did that and this is how they did that. We'd much rather them take the original story and not change the story, but do it a reimagining that does the actual characters justice. Because there isn't really anything more we should want out of the story apart from the story itself. And Jones goes on here to state that a very important fact that you're never going to be able to please everyone and that he knows a lot of people are really going to love this because they love the book just as much as he does. And there's going to be a lot of people who are so aggravated about the horrible things that they feel that they did wrong that they're going to have to reread and just can't use their own creative imagination to take themselves out of their small, secular, sec, you, secular, man, that word is hard, secular box, I don't know, they're living in a box and maybe they should get out of it, but there was a response, he says that, uh, they asked, the response has been amazing, they say. People are even putting clips of the show next to the 1994 film and deconstructing how the series does it better. And that is true, in my opinion. I feel like there are many points in the film that do it better, do the characters more justice that you don't get whenever you are only going off of, you know, 20 minute scenes between this character and this character instead of 40 minute scenes between each character. So it's something that you really have to give credence to the television show. It will have space to deliver time frames and characters that the movie didn't really have the space to do. And it's, what do you think it is that keeps fans coming back to Anne Rice's world? He says, uh, he makes a little joke about Spider-Man and just, I think what it is is he says we're all really struck and he, and it might change as he keeps rewriting and rereading it but but there's just something about uh, this book that should be part of the American literature canon 
and that's why I think it's got life. And it, he speaks just a little bit about season two, which I think is what we're all most excited for. He says, can you say anything about season two? He says, I can say I'm here in London right now, and I did two-day workshop with a particular theater company talking about a particular literature theater company that is in Paris. That's what all I can say. So that is what's most promising about this little news article is they are obviously in the works for their theater de la vampires. All right, that's it, everyone. If you wouldn't mind leaving us a like and a subscribe, and if you want to support our channel, just be sure to hit that share button.